Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to, what is this? It's a pain relief session. That's what it is. It's a relax and pain relief or pain and stress relief. So the reason, my name's Jason Newland. My website is jasonnewland.com. The reason why I'm holding this sock will come, um, <laughs> will be revealed shortly. I haven't just been in the middle of doing something weird, don't worry. And um, please only listen or watch this video when you can safely close your eyes. I'm recording this on the iPhone, I'm not using any microphones, so I hope the sound's okay. So basically, I'm gonna give you a technique that you can use to reduce your physical pain and also to reduce stress levels because the same techniques can be used for both. Very exciting, I'm sure you believe and agree. So this is something, it's not my own idea. I must just wanna tell you that. I have only had one idea in my life and that was recently, I had an idea for a toilet app. Um, it, it would actually be inside your toilet, like a little camera. <laughs> and it lets you know on your phone whether or not you need to wipe. Um, but apparently no one wanted to invest in it, so it didn't, didn't go anywhere. So here we go. The basics of this is... When you're, when you're going through a stressful period or through, um, you got chronic pain, one particular part of your brain is in operation, apparently. And because you're focusing on that thing, whether it's the anxiety, whether it's the stress, whether it's the physical discomfort, you kind of get more of what you're focusing on. It's almost like you're, not on purpose, but you're telling your brain what to focus on. And because your mind doesn't have the ability to judge for itself what's needed, you know, it's like if you're focused on something, Oh, that's what we need more of. Which is in the same way as if you focus on negative things, more negative thoughts come into your mind. If you focus on positive things, more positivity comes into your mind and into your life. It's just standard stuff, really. So with this, focusing on that, Unpleasant feeling. It's not nice, obviously. But because you're using maybe just one part of your brain, and only a slight part of your brain, maybe not the whole of that side of the brain, the idea is if you start evening it out, so you're using both sides of your brain, it helps to reduce that discomfort, that stress level, so introducing more of a sense of relaxation, more of a sense of physical comfort. Now, as I said, this is not my idea. Um, I'm probably presenting it in a little bit of a different way to other people because uh, most people are more professional than I am. I mean, look, I didn't even roll the sock into a, an actual ball and it's still got Vinny's hairs on it. By the way, it's Vinny's my little dog. So I do actually have a ball that I could use, but the reason I'm not using the ball is because it's covered in Vinny's saliva, basically. It's very wet at the moment because we've just been playing catch in the park. <sighs> Unfortunately, he doesn't bring the ball back to me. So I actually get more exercise than he does. The old bugger he is. Let's see if I can put this into a ball. Oh, yeah, look, no, 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 it's two socks there. Now I've cheated. You see me cheat. I must be able to do this. So 
The idea really is a way to stimulate both sides of your brain. You could take out the piano. Now, there's not really enough time in this video to, or this podcast episode to teach you the piano because I'd need to learn myself first and then teach you. So this would be like a three, four year recording. That's a long time, even for YouTube. So I can't do that. What other things could you use both your hands for? I mean, it depends what kind of job you've got. So if you've got a, a job and you both, I don't know, what you're using both your hands in your job, uh, typing or I don't know, just basically using both your hands, then that does stimulate both sides of your brain. But then that distraction of doing that would very much likely decrease the physical focus as well of any kind of unpleasant feelings because you're distracted and you're thinking about what you're doing, you're focusing on what you're doing. You don't have time to be bothered by other things, including worries, concerns, or even things you're looking forward to. You know, you might be having a holiday tomorrow, but you might not have time to even be excited about that because you're focusing on putting the filling into pies or, uh, finishing the email or talking to people on the phone, whatever it is you're doing. Um, but this is really focused more on maybe at home when perhaps you don't have that distraction of you, what you have at work, maybe. Now, there's a chance because for some reason, some people will say that I'm quite boring. I disagree. I think, um, I think I'm a very, very interesting young boy. And some people say that just by listening to me, talking, and um, just by hearing my voice, seeing my funny face, which can be a distraction from lots of things, I guess. Um, I personally think I look like George Clooney, but no one else seems to agree. And I had done a survey. I did this. I have, yeah, worldwide survey. Four people joined into the survey. They actually participated which is quite good, I think. So I sometimes get told, actually quite a lot, that the reason for watching the video or for listening to the podcast to start with can sometimes be almost forgotten. You know, like you walk into a room or you walk upstairs or downstairs or you like into the garden like, oh, what did I come out here for? Of course, you don't want to hear that kind of story from a surgeon, do you? Like, oh, you you forgetful, are you? Perhaps someone else can do my appendix. Thank you very much. But that feeling of like, oh, and I guess forgetting the thing that you, maybe you've forgotten and you were listening for a reason. You wanted to increase your sense of comfort, relaxation, physical and emotional. But something else has, has kind of changed in your head in a good way, you know. You know, if, if I put this sock on my head, it almost looks like hair. Well, not really. I don't know why I did that. So there's a visual for you. Imagining me with hair. I do actually have hair. I don't mean just on my balls. I mean, I do have hair, but it's very short. I shave my head. Um, 
not necessarily relevant for this recording, but... See, the main thing I think about, the, the, the way I see it is, it's about how you feel. It's about how you feel before and how you feel afterwards. How did you feel then? How do you feel now? And there's that feeling changes as you move through the video or through the podcast. And I mean, some people, I think someone wrote and said, you know, I started listening to your recording. I was feeling sorry for myself. And after about 10 minutes of listening to you, I just was so grateful that I'm not you. I've actually got things quite good and I'm, I'm just really grateful and that I'm not just someone just blabbering about no, about nothing, like a blabbering little monkey. Like, to be fair, that wasn't the best comment I ever had. It wasn't my best uh, uh, review, being called a blabbering little monkey. Yeah, I probably wouldn't put that on the back of my book as a recommendation. <laughs> Possibly. Mind you, it's not a bad title, is it? Blabbering Little Monkey. The Life of a Blabbering Little Monkey. That could be my new podcast. Oh! oh. Right. I was going to use the... Um, I was going to use the socks, but it's dropped on the floor. Oh, well. I could use this instead. I've got some sellotape. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's like, I mean, the idea really, what I was going to do, but I'm not sure if I'll bother. Um, hmm, sticky. See, I find, because this is, I don't know if you ever use sellotape. If you don't know what sellotape is, basically, it's sticky one side, and it, but it's not sticky the other side. And it can be used. I mean, I think the one thing I've used sellotape for most in my adult life um, was when I've sent a letter that's, because I don't know about you, but I don't send many letters, to be honest. It's not a thing that I spend a lot of time doing. But they are, are quite... I used to send letters. I used to, I used to write poetry, believe it or not. I used to write poetry. I used to be quite romantic. But anyway, the, the letter, that little bit that you lick to seal the letter, I don't really trust it. Not that I use, I don't really send letters very much. But what I do is I tape it a little bit there across and a little bit there across there or straight across if it's if it's uh, like a straight thing. But it's quite handy. I don't know if you have it in other countries. It might just be a UK thing. Um, but it might, might be available in other countries. I don't know. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. I remember... Um, Yeah, I used to try and use it to like wrap around my brother and stick him to a tree, but didn't didn't hold him for long. Color days. So yeah, it's all about how you feel. How I mean, there's different ways of distraction, isn't there? The different ways of because sometimes mm. nonsense, like you're talking about this now. He had a sock. He came on. He had a sock. Then he came on with some sellotape. Then he was talking about his, his brother. Um, he talked about having hair on his balls. I mean, what was, why was that? That's a bit, that's a bit unprofessional. Oh, come on, I'm not the only one. I'm proud of my age that there's still some hair there. Mm. So, it's the only thing I'm proud of. So sometimes, even listening to what might be called nonsense. Nonsense. Equal. Can actually have an effect on how you physically feel or how you emotionally feel. Because you might notice that you're feeling different. 
your mental state is changed. I mean, some people might be angry, like, I can't believe I watched this. 15 bloody minutes, and he's talked absolute crap for 15 minutes. Well, you're still listening. You're still watching, so, you know, it's not really my fault, is it? But why didn't you do, he didn't even do the exercise that he was going to do. He had, he came on with a sock. Clearly he was going to do something with a sock. But he didn't do it. He dropped the sock on the floor and that was it. I mean, that, that's, 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 what is that? Who does that? I do. I do that. Years of experience has, has shown me that it kind of doesn't matter what I do because that does. Um, I've dropped socks on the floor before. Flocks, socks on the floor before. That sounds too much similar, isn't it? But I've done it before and nothing terrible has happened. Thing is, you, you can't really trip over a sock. You can, but because you, you, you stand on it and it's squashed. It's not really a trippy over kind of thing. It's not like a brick or, you know, a ladder lying down on, you know, it's, it's a sim or an anvil, an anvil then. That's, that's more trippy than a sock. But anvils are better at other things, especially if you need an anvil for something. Um, a sock won't do. You try and make a sword laying it on a sock, won't, won't. Why would you need to make a sword? It's a different type of video, really, isn't it? So, something changes in your mind. Something changes in how you physically feel when you watch uh, videos or you listen to a podcast like this. I've got itchy nose. And my stomach's going, I feel I might be hungry. Or I need a toilet, one of them. It's the same kind of sound. You know that sound like a drain just emptying, or a sink rather, not a drain. A sink just kind of emptying of water. Like, like that. I'm not sure if I need to do a burp or a fart. <coughs> burp, that's nice. Lovely. How pleasant. Now, most people would edit that out. So, how are you feeling compared to how you felt before? Be honest. Do you know, I know it's, it might be infuriating, like, uh, it's not hypnosis. I'm going to say it was hypnosis, did I? Did I say it was hypnosis? Maybe I did. Maybe I lied. Maybe this is my version of hypnosis. Maybe this is the version that the JJ Newland has come up with after many years of doing hypnosis, realising that actually there's different ways to feel differently. And this is all about feeling differently. It's a different way to do it. It's not it's not just one way to change how you feel. It's not just one way. There's two ways. No, there's, there's multiple, multiple, or get, or lots of different ways of, of changing how you feel. And the fact is, The way we feel is changing all the time. Now, I'm very in tune with mood changes because of my condition. I have bi bipolar, bi bipolar, I have bipolar. And I know what it feels to have, for me, how it feels to have different changes happen. And as far as I'm aware, it's natural for all people to have our feelings changing. It never stays the same. No state is the same for very long. I've even seen angry people 
struggle to stay angry. I've seen it in person. Um, in fact, I've even been, I've broken that, that, um, pattern of their anger, made them laugh. And you could see them trying to force themselves to be angry again, to continue the argument. Which just shows you that not, not all of these feelings that we think we should be having are necessarily useful or even relative. It's my stomach again. I'm ever so excited. I want to listen back to that, see if it was actually picked up. Now this is a little bit strange because I don't normally do videos. I haven't made videos for years really, not properly, not regularly. And I don't know, there's something, I've been making podcasts, that's what I've been focusing on. And there's something a little bit different, there's something, I realise there's something I've been missing. And part of the reason I make videos is because when I started making videos on YouTube, doing hypnosis videos back in 2007 there was, I was like 10 years old. And now look at me, I'm 90. And it's weird to look back and I had a really, hello everybody, my name's Jason. I was really high pitched voice. I was young, I had hair. I had a dark beard, dark. Now it's white, kind of. Well, it's not really a beard, but it's, you know, it's. I've always had a pink face, so I don't need anyone to comment on that. I am, I think I might be, um, my ethnicity might be in, in the past, uh, more towards red, pink skin, red skin, or whatever, because that's what I have. I've got a pink face, I always had a pink face. Um, not really relevant to what we're talking about, but, it is because I don't really like, I don't like making videos. I don't like seeing myself on the camera. But I've realized a way around that is to not watch the video back. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the video, do what I do, say what I say, upload the video, and that's it. And that'll be done. Done, 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 done. Now, It might not be the perfect way to do it. And it might not be the best audio quality that it could be. You know, if I was gonna make, um, use, cause I've got some good, like, you know, microphones and equipment to make podcasts with. I could record with the podcast with the microphone in front of my mouth in there, like, and, but I kind of, I don't know, it's just easier. I'm very, I like things to be easy. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I like things to be easy. So coming back to how you feel, how do you feel? Wow, it's like a, it's like a ring from my finger, this sellotape. So how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Not about like me, like, like well, I'm frustrated because you're not doing what you said you're going to do and I wanted it to be different and I wanted you to be professional. I wanted you to have an American accent. I wanted you to have hair, but you don't have any hair. I wanted you to be slim. You can't tell if I'm slim or not. All you can see is my chest upwards. I might be slim. I might not be slim. I might be tall. I might be seven foot tall. You can't tell that. You can't tell. I might not need glasses. I just wear them for vanity reasons because they make me look like Clark Kent. Yeah. So, yeah, how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? Compared to how you did before you press the play button. How do you feel within yourself? Have you notice any changes? 
you notice feeling more relaxed. I mean, that will happen just through boredom because boredom causes relaxation and relaxation causes tension to release from your body. You can't be tense and relaxed at the same time. It just doesn't happen. Um, you can't dislike and love the same food at the same time. You can't be eating a banana saying, oh, I love this. Oh, I hate it. I love it. Oh, but I hate it. You can't. You either, I mean, you might not love a banana. I mean, a banana is not something I imagine many people have huge emotional reactions to. Like, I can't stand a banana. I saw that. I was so happy. My wedding day was perfect. Then I saw a banana and it just ruined everything. Probably not going to happen. So it's not, I guess, a great example. But to hold two conflicting emotions at the same time is unlikely to be able to be sustained, contained, sustained, sustainable, sustainable, one of them. Relaxation is something that we're born with the ability to do. We're born with the ability to sleep easily. I mean, just look at any baby, even the crying baby, forgetting the crying bit, but babies are born with the ability to sleep. I've seen babies fall asleep while they're actually eating. They'll be eating like, and there's that whole thing that even little kids do when they try and stay awake and their eyes are going and they try, they want to stay awake because um maybe it's it's a special holiday or it's exciting because their cousins around or maybe you know christmas eve they don't want to go to sleep yet because they're so excited about the presents that they're going to get tomorrow morning blah 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 and they're like oh i want to stay awake and their eyelids are just not playing around and not playing along with what they want. I want to stay awake, but my eyelids want to keep closing. And each time their eyelids close, they get more and more tired and start to drift. And it's natural. We're born with this ability. We're not born with many abilities. I mean, there's the internal functions, you know, the heart, liver, kidneys, pooing, all that stuff that we have, you know, um neurological functions that, but it's growing isn't it inside us our brains are growing and developing as we're you know from, the, from being born onwards or wherever onwards and we can't do much when we're actually born we like just lay there yeah. like a bit i don't want to say pointless but it's not there's not a lot of not very entertaining, as it were, but we do have the ability to do a few little things. We don't even have control over our own fingers and toes yet when you're first born. So it's almost like an alien thing of hand. What's that thing there? It's your hand. Not my hand. Yeah, it is your hand. It's not my hand. Of course, babies can't talk, but if they could, that might be one of the things. Mind you, babies could talk. <laughs> um, I guess the first thing they'd probably say is, well, why did that doctor hit me? Why did that doctor smack me on the bum? What'd I do to him? That might be the first thing. Uh, another thing would be, um, I prefer this room, it's a lot more, a lot roomier. That last place I lived was a bit cramped. A little bit cramped. So yeah, and other things that perhaps I shouldn't say out loud that might be a thing they might say. It's like, oh, when you think about it, we all should be able to swim, shouldn't we? And we spent all those months underwater. 
basically scuba diving in a very small pond. It's true, haven't it? Like a little goldfish bowl, and we've got this little scuba diving, but instead of the thing, it goes into our belly button, instead of into our, you know, we haven't got the breathing apparatus in our mouth, it's in our belly button. It's amazing, isn't it, really, when you think about it. Who was the first to discover that you had to cut the umbilical cord? Someone had to discover it. I'm wondering if for thousands of years people were just walking around connected to each other. I mean, literally connected. Because they didn't know they could cut the umbilical cord. Can't do that because it's like basically cutting the the, the knot off of a balloon and just like boom, just deflate so they probably thought we can't do that because everyone would just like become flat onto the floor like deflating that so there'd be generations and generations of people all attached to each other by the umbilical cords you wouldn't be able to travel far would you Wow. Hmm. Anyway, so we're born with the ability to relax. We're born with the ability to sleep deeply. And I think that's quite cool. Because we haven't been haven't had to learn it and this is something that we have that's naturally there that we haven't needed to learn then that's a sign that to me that's a sign that it's cool that's a groovy sign that's a sign that um You're always going to have it. It's always going to be with you. Even if you've forgotten. It will come back. It's always with you, but it's not a conscious thing. It's not a conscious thing. It's like if someone's been driving for 20 years and then you start saying, OK, now I want you to focus on every single thing you do when you're driving it will be a bit of a mind fart for the person because they're so used to doing everything automatically that it will be very weird to be trying to focus on each thing as they do it. That's why you have to train to be a, a driving instructor. Let's see? Anyway, my dog's barking now, so I'm going to go. Let me know how you feel.